Right then, hello, hello, hello. Right, slight change to the uh, the setup. Hopefully this is a bit better. I've put some love into it. Um, we're going to do something similar to yesterday, but we're going to do it in an aircraft I'm a little bit more familiar with and that I know I, I can show you some of the stuff we were talking about yesterday. So this is an A320, uh, Airbus A320. We're in British Airways colours. Uh, and as you'll see at the bottom of the screen, EGLL to LXGB, so that's Heathrow to Gibraltar. Um, I'm going to be pausing the recording as we're going through to try and keep this video uh, to a reasonable length. And we'll just do the, uh, just talk about the important stuff. Uh, so for anyone not interested in the startup procedure, you can skip forward. It's probably about five, ten minutes or so. Uh, but if you are interested, then, you know, feel free to stick around. So batteries on, external power on. Um, and what we can do, because this is the Airbus, we have a virtual co-pilot. So I will turn him on. Uh, in fact, I'll turn him on in a second. First of all, do do the load. So we're going to have 168 passengers. Think no cargo. Uh, in fact, actually, did we have cargo? Uh, look, ba -ba -ba -ba, bear with me. Operational flight plan. Cargo. Oh yes, we do have cargo. Uh, 1.3. Six four one point three six close enough, um, and our tanks are eight point seven tons. Eight point eight point seven. Uh, come on, look in the trim wheel. Eight point seven oh five. So we'll round that up. Eight point seven one. Load fuel. Start boarding and. I will have to open a cargo door to allow me to load the cargo. I exit out of that too quick, I think I did. Oh no, it's open. Why can't I load cargo? Uh, that wasn't a button I wanted to press. Uh, uh, one point. Not what it was. Three six four. Three six. Fuel was eight point seven one. Eight point seven one. Board fuel. Right. Why won't cargo go in? Let's open all the doors. That's good enough. Ah, oh, there we go. Apparently it goes in through the, uh, the rear door. Who knew? So I'm going to fire the co-pilot up and I will then set up the flight computer and I can pop that out which makes it a bit easier for you guys to see. One thing I do need to do is turn on the ADIRS. So that's the inertial reference system. Uh, it's basically the, the what we use instead of GPS for the plane to know where it is. Uh, Copilot is on. Cockpit preparation. Cockpit preparation checklist. Batteries. Both on. Electrical power. External power is on. Navigation lights. Set on. Engine master. Both off. Engine mode selector. Check normal. Landing gear lever. Checked. Parking brake. Off. Flaps. Check position. Speed brake lever. Set. Thrust levers. Idle. Transponder mode. Checked standby. Radio control panel. Set on. It can recall. Checked. Anti-skid. On. Flight director. On. Emergency lights. Set. No smoking signs. Set on. Empty eyes. Off. Probe window heat. Auto. Air condition. Checked. Ventilation panel. Is checked. Electric panel. Checked. Fuel pumps. 
set on. Hydraulics. Is checked. Anchor brake pressure. Checked. Ground proximity warning system. On. Electronic flight control system. On. Adiers. Checked. Emergency equipment. Is checked. Checklist complete. Okay, so that's that done. We're on a westerly departure, uh, which means we're on the Goxy One Golf. Don't worry too, too much about that. I'm just rattling through this. Uh, if it's interesting to you, then do shout. Um, I can do this in more detail on, on another video, but this isn't overly relevant to the pilot nav stuff we're doing. So we've got the route in here. We've done our uh, our initialization. Um, we've put the departure in. Um, so we need to do a smidge of route of uh, performance calculations. So excuse me while I just drag that in. Um, so this tool here, takeoff performance calculator, it's a bit of freeware. Um, I just need to get my charts up. And the airport chart. So we'll be going off 27 left. That's what we're currently going off at Heathrow. Um, and we've roughly got about 3,500-ish metres. So we're in an A320. We've got about 3,500-ish metres. Good enough there. Airport elevation is less than 1,000 feet. Weather is a very good question. Uh, Let's uh, really come on, get off the frequency now. So, zero four zero five knots. Ooh, that gives us a slight tailwind then. Um, outside air temperature is chilly today, eight degrees. Q and H is one zero two six hectopascals. That's quite high. Our takeoff weight, which I can get from. The plan is 69281 tons. 69281. Flaps 1 will be absolutely fine. Anti ice, uh, love engine only. Runway condition, is it actually dry? Doesn't look great, does it? Is dry, it's just hazy. Calcul calculate takeoff speeds. Okay, uh, can you even see that? No, that's is it. Well, anyway, it's done all this for us, it's just put it through the uh, computer. So I'm going to transfer all of that info into here. So our, <laughs> that's quite funny. Our V1, so the point we're committed to take off, is 152 knots. Our rotation speed, so when we actually pull back on the stick, is also 152 knots. And the speed at which we can safely continue takeoff with only one engine is 153 knots. Um, transition is 7,000 feet. Thrust reduction uh, will be at 2,000 and accelerate at 3,000. That's a bit of noise, it's strictly um important here uh engine out acceleration will be 1500 feet whoops flex temperature so this tells the engines that they're a little bit hotter than they are so it derates the engine so it cranks itself down it means you burn less fuel consequence of that is you use more of the runway to take off but because you use less fuel obviously that's preferable on a long runway of course um and with flaps one with trim up 1.0. And that is our takeoff performance data done. Uh, let's get some of the screens on. Something like that. And we'll do the same for the sensor console. Is the gamma okay? Oh, in fact, it looks better on your screen than it does mine. Fantastic. Um, we are flying online, however, because I don't want the distractions, um, we're invisible to everyone else, but we can see them, um, which is nice. 
Um, so on the overhead, get my my own head over it. Uh, jaunty angle so I can see what I'm doing. And see how this will come on when the engine starts. That's just caused a huge lag spike. Yep. Uh, we'll turn the heating on because we're going to need that and we'll put the APU master power on just slightly ahead of time. We don't actually need it on yet. Um, now then, how are we doing on boarding? Uh, what I'm looking for, load and fuel. So 1.6 tons of cargo is on, the fuel is on, passengers, we've got 160, 8 more to go. Super. Um, right, let me just have a quick look and see what air traffic control is online. Uh, in the meantime, we wanted pitch trim up one point more. But do we have Heathrow Tower on? Yes, we do. On 128. Wrong. 118 decimal 5. So I'm going to have them on just so you can hear it. Uh, but it's uh, we're not going to be interacting with him. One eight decimal five. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, there you go. Excellent. So Q and H one zero two six. That means. Our altimeter re will read roughly zero and put that on the secondary here. So, if I play about with this, you can see our altitude changing in here. So, what we do is we set what the airfield air pressure is, and that zero is our scale out. Our right, boarding has completed, so we can close the doors, and then that will trigger the co-pilot to do his thing again. And that's the last of the doors closing. Before start checklist. Windows and doors. Closed and locked. APU. Set on. APU bleed. So we're just waiting for the auxiliary power unit, the small jet engine in the tail, to fire up. That's down here. You can see the exhaust gas temperature coming up. And you can see its end speed. That's its turbine. So it's a spinny turbine. That's its speed coming up. We want it up at 100%. At which point the generator will kick in, so it will be generating electricity, and we'll have some air pressure, and it's the air pressure that we use to start the main engines, because they're not electrically spun up. It's a big hair dryer, basically, but you're blowing into it to turn it on. So there's the APU generator on 115 volts. So Set on. APU bleed comes on, he's done it for me, so we can see we've got 35 Set PSI, on. Trust levers. Idle. Parking brake. 35 Set PSI on. there. Bearer reference. Uh, look, I forgot I had VATS by that, let me just pop that up there, there we go. Set on. Okay, checklist complete, fantastic. Going initially up to 33,000 feet, flight level 330. Let me just check my monitoring is on. That is fine. Okay. So start push. We're going to go tail right. You're not going to really see what it's doing there, but I'm just telling it I want to push back and I want the tail to go to the right. Flight deck to ground. Go ahead, sir. Very ground, quiet. we have ATC clearance for push and start. Please confirm ground equipment and services are clear. Roger. The ground equipment and stairs are clear, all doors are closed. Steering pin is in position and we're ready when you are, Captain. Start pushback. So we disconnect the steering because... Right, it sir, 
the guy on the ground is going to do the steering for, for us. Parking brake comes off. There's a slightly more clunky sensor on here. And we can start both engines. Okay. So, ignition to start. And we'll start number one first. Hello, yes, I've just coordinated a departure for you. So I'll have a clearance when you're ready. Come on. Uh, oh, I zoomed in far too much there. Where are you? Climbing to 6, feet. Okay. And you'll see I've sorted out the scenery as well, so it's actually... <laughs> so it shouldn't be bouncing about all over the place. Squawk 2227. So Squawk, that's your transponder code. It goes in this little radio down here. Uh, that's how air traffic control know who is who in the air. Each person, each aircraft has its own unique squawk code. So we'll wait for engine number one to spool up. Exhaust gas temperature is coming up, which means fuel is igniting. We're just waiting for the exhaust engine pressure. Engine one is stabilised. Yeah. So now we can start engine two. And it'll actually use air from engine number one to start engine number two. So we can see it's spinning up. There's no gas temperature at the moment, which means there's no ignition. There's no fire in the uh, engine yet. Just spinning it up fast enough so when we do light the fire, it actually kicks it out the back. There's fuel and ignition. Tower, hello, clear Durban, Midhurst, three Juliet departure, squawk two two four two. Uh, so I just confirmed departure now at the Monday Spear, Speedbird 4 1. Clear for Midhurst, 3 Juliet departure. Okay, and so I just confirmed the score once more, Speedbird 4 1. Delta 224 2, QNH 10. OK, so parking brake on. Parking brake is set. OK, then we have some turbines connected. You know, steering pin is removed. Uh, oh, steering okay. signal on the right. Uh, have a good run, sir. Did I say 27 left? I did. I've pushed back the wrong way, haven't I? Whoopsies. Never mind. After start, start checklist. checklist. Ooh, look, Jumbo. Engine selector. Set. Hey, you please? So we don't need the ADU anymore because so we've got the engines on. Set off. Draft spoilers. Set. Rudder trim. Check zero. Pitch trim. Checked. Did that. Flight controls. Flight controls. So. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Right. What's this? I haven't pushed the wrong way, I was getting I forgot where it's only a five. So that was a brake check, just using the tow brakes. Check zero. And then check that they go back to zero. Max. Takeoff data. Reviewed. FCU. Checked. Checked. So we're going off 27 left, which is the runway just in front of us, but we're going from the other end. So we'll be taxiing anti clockwise on Bravo. Currently on Alpha. So there's two taxiways that just do a loop around the airport. 
One's clockwise, one's anti-clockwise. Oh, that was a bit of a fast turn. Got my GNT there, guys. My oh, look at this fog. Well, haze, technically, it is. So, yeah, as I say, we're online. So, all the other aircraft you see are actually real people. Other nutters. We've currently got 13 departures coming out of Heathrow. Yeah, that's sort of centred on there. Hello. Um, three arrivals. The Lufthansa. Yeah. There's a random British Airways 747 over there. No, not 74. What's that? No, could be a treble seven. Completely the wrong terminal. Oh, there's another one there even. Huh. What are you doing over there? Terminal five, guys. So it's not that long of a taxi uh, to get to the other end of this runway. Oh, for crank the speed up a smidge. And we've got a company speed bird in front of us. 7 8. Is it what we were flying yesterday? I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a spotter. Oh, they've swapped. Ah, so they're going on Niners now. I thought that might have happened. Well, we're going to stick with our current plan. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're going to be... Um, going the wrong way here but as I say we're we're online but we're invisible to everyone so we're not going to be upsetting the controllers and other uh, other pilots realistically I would just change my flight plan but I just haven't bothered let's just get us in the air and then we can talk about some of the uh, the stuff we're here to do and as you can see, I am absolutely no good at taxiing. Same, for, same in real life as well, not very good. We're going to swap over onto Alpha because that guy's coming right towards us. As I say, he, he can't see us at all, so. Got nine uniform, another uh, British Airways. Scandinavian? November is the current weather information. No, we're not. <laughs> That's not existed at Heathrow for a long time. So we'll start the before takeoff checklist and we'll get this uh, thing in the air. So, lights on, strobe going on, set on, stowed, transponder I'm going to leave off. Um, it shouldn't come, we shouldn't come up on the air traffic controller screen, but I just want to make sure of that and keep the uh, transponder off. So we're good for takeoff. Good to 
Oh, oh, joystick cam. So I'm using the rudder pedals at the moment for steering. Two seven left is Chuck. Americans. Sorry, oh, Take off. Come on, SRS on SRS runway. All verified. How's that? This is a bit windy. Quite a lot of red one. Yeah, I, I'm aware of the aircraft in front of us. That's because we're going the wrong way. Rotate. See how much easier it is to fly than the Boeing. I'm not touching the controls. We've not got the autopilot on them. Not much to see today. Will be as soon as we get out of the uh, the haze and the fog and everything. It's about 8,000 feet ceiling. And we're currently just passing 2,000 feet. Fine thrust. Okay, change your frequency over to Heathrow Director. Slats coming up. Check oh, norm. The weather's going to look a bit nicer now. Disarmed. Slats. Check retracted. Landing gear. Gear up. Lights off. Exterior lights. Set off. Hex. Both on. Anti ice. Off. Decals. Set. Altimeter. Arrow reference set and cross checked. One zero two six. One zero two six. Check. Check this complete. Oh, that was a bit of funny too. Thousands ago, we've got an altitude restriction here in London. That's the joystick in an Airbus, that tiny little thing. Quite funny. Uh, 
We should be going above that. Um, I'm going to make the autopilot on there. Okay. Awesome. So, sorry, every time I tab out, the, uh, the audio dies. So we're going to have a quick look at Plan G. Um, and actually to that extent... Come on. Go. Change frequency. Right, okay. So, let's get on and do some learning then, shall we? So, remember yesterday we talked about DMEs and NDBs and VORs. So, here we currently are. What uh, NDBs have we got in range? We've got Woodley. Excellent. On 352. Uh, actually, can we pick one that's roughly ahead? No? Nope. Okay. Fine. 352. Is it? Yeah, 352 kilohertz. So, what I can do is let's key that in. Uh, Rod nav. And on ADF, we want 352 kilohertz. Now, if we look down here, if I flip ADF on, look at this. Woodley's popped up, because it's actually able to show you, because we've got a moving map, and we've got this green arrow pointing straight towards it. Now, that's purely done on radio. Okay, this isn't anything to do with GPS or anything like that. That's purely radio that is putting that green line. Nor the blue one, we'll talk about that shortly. But the green line is the NDB, and the arrow is just pointing towards it. And no matter when, if we turn, or do anything like that, so let's see if we've actually got a turn coming up. Uh, let's just turn all that off. And turn that on. Well, why is our plan just completely vanish? Transition altitude. Uh, transition, so over to standard. standard. Check. Excellent, jolly good. And up, up and away we go. So as you see, we just did turn a bit there, and we are actually now out of range of Woodley, so let's find another one. Uh, we're coming into Southampton, that's bound to have an NDB. 391.5. So let's go. Oops. 391.5. Pachink. And we've got a little diamond in front of us at the moment, so it thinks it's over there, but we're not actually quite in range of it just yet. Oh, in fact, no, I've not got it turned on. Ah, there we go. Right, bang on in front of us. EAS is its identifier. And if we have a look here, hopefully you can see that EAS. So we are keyed into the right one. And the NDB will just point towards it, and if we wanted to go to Southampton, which in this case we do, you just fly straight towards that green arrow. Now we've also got a VOR at Southampton, 11335. Uh, so, 11335, we're actually using that at the moment. So hopefully you can see that. So if I flick over to the VOR, And can I key in a course? Yes, I can. So we're currently on, let's say, that's 215. 215. 
chink. Right, there we go. We've now got this blue line, it even plots Southampton on the moving map for us. And I can make it really noisy by putting terrain on as well. That's not really any use, is it? Now, can you see this little blue line here is ever so slightly offset? Just kill that. There we go. Slightly offset. So if we wanted to fly into Southampton on a course of 215, then the actual line we want to be on is ever so slightly to the right of us. So if I flick back to here, we go to the VOR. Let's do a radial of 215. Distance 50 miles will be fine. Um, and of course, I want it to go the other way. So inbound, chink. So we've just drawn that in and we've said, I want to be on a course of 215. And the line is at the moment ever so slightly to the right of us. We are in the realms of error here. Ah, but good enough. And we can see it is slightly to the right of us. Now, say we wanted to go in Southampton on a radial of, let's say, 2.30, ka-chink, that line is very far to the left of us, okay? So we want to be on this line. So how do we get there? Well, first of all, let's key in 2.30, ka-choink, it's very to the left of us. So this is telling us we need to fly to the left to pick up this line and we know we're getting close to the line because the line will start moving with the leg spikes and when the line comes in the middle we know we're on course it's literally as simple as that now watch what happens when we fly over the beacon That's the NDB for Southampton. It's moving rather quick. It's doing a spinema thing. The VOR dropped out completely, but now we've picked it up again. And as you can see, we are going off course for that 215 course, that 215 radial out of Southampton. The arrow's going the other way now because we're going away from the NDB is just pointing straight back at Southampton. It's doing no more, no less. You can't, it can't give you radials or anything like that. It's just saying, yeah, it's over there, currently behind you. So at the moment, we can see that the 215 radial out of Southampton is very, or well, medium off to our right-hand side. Well, let's verify that. And as you can see, this was the 215 radial. Oh, you can't see. Why can't you see? I've not turned the screen on is off a little bit to our right hand side as you can see on there it, it's literally as easy as that and say we want to fly out and oh we can pick up an ndb here alderney on the islands so 383 we probably can't quite pick that up yet oh but we do have bournemouth down here come on give me the frequency please Come on. I'll lose my rag with you in a minute. Tell me, is it? No. Nah, it's plain silly. Oh, there we go. No, not that one. Not that one. The other one. I want the one behind it. No, it's not going to play. Um, Portland, are we in range of that? Yes, we are. Portland all the way down here, past Weymouth. So 313 kilohertz, and that should be off to our right-hand side. So let's verify that. 313 kilohertz. Chink. And it's off to our right-hand side. Easy peasy, yeah? That's literally all you need to know at this stage for NDBs, non-directional beacons, you get an arrow that points towards it. That's all it does, if you're in range. VORs, you get an arrow that points towards it, but you can also 
key in an exact course you want to be in, be on. So I want to go towards it or go away from it on exactly this bearing. Doesn't mean you necessarily have to have been to that point. What do I mean by that? So we're currently flying on this three, uh, 215 radial out of Southampton. And let's say we want to pick up um, a radial out of Guernsey on a bearing of, let's say, 15 degrees. Chink. Oh, and I've clicked inbound and I didn't mean to. 15 degrees. Chink. So we could fly on this radial out of here and then pick up the Guernsey radial and fly down there. Okay, I've not drawn this line quite long enough. Let's extend that out, shall we? 215, let's say 100 miles is fine. There we go. And where they intersect, right, where they intersect, if we had both VORs on here, we would get two lines. And currently we're actually out of range of Midhurst. So what was the frequency? Let's uh, let's give it a go, shall we? Frequency here for Guernsey, 109.5. Sorry, 109.4. So let's key that in, 109.4. On a course of what do we want? 15 chink 215 out of Southampton. We're on VOR, we're on VOR. So we can see now we've got this white line there, it's not particularly easy to see, and we've got this blue line. When they both come into the middle, and we might just have to flip flop between them on this to see it. But when they both, when they both come into the middle, it means we must be on both lines. And if we're on both lines, we must be at the point where they've intersected. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much a similar concept to triangulation. All right. So let us. Oh, hello zoom out a bit so that's the uk up here that's where we're coming out of this busy mess of loads of people down to southampton and we're going all the way down here can't quite see that all the way down to the south side of spain to gibraltar so we will pick this up a little bit later on i'm going to continue the flight but the next you'll see is when we're on approach into Gibraltar, because there's some really interesting stuff, particularly um, interesting in terms of navigation when it comes to Gibraltar. But there we are. Sorry, that's a bit loud, isn't it? I'll get the audio sorted and I'll tell you what we're doing now. It's not that down a bit. And you're still getting the feedback from the mic. There we go. Cool. So that's us out of Heathrow, inbound Southampton. For some reason, I've not got an ETA. Why have I not got an ETA? I have no idea. But anyway, at the top of the screen, uh, you can see a progress bar. This is what I use when I'm streaming. Um, so we're currently that far into the flight. When that's black all the way across, then, then we've landed pretty much. Uh, but the ETA is uh, largely irrelevant for you guys anyway, because uh, I'm chopping this video up. Alright, as before, any questions downstairs in the description. See you for approach.